Okay, so as I mentioned, you guys, Martin does this for a living. Hey guys, and um, here he is. <coughs> okay, uh, as uh, Mike mentioned, uh, I work with uh, the WordPress software and website development on a daily basis. Uh, there's a couple things that I'd like to mention to each class before I begin any kind of technical overview about anything. Okay? The first part is you really need to understand before you start getting involved with any type of theme or any type of website that you're doing is starting to understand the information you need to gather for the client that you're making this project for or if you're making it for yourself, make sure you gather all the information you need and do all of your analysis planning before you actually start looking for a website theme to create because we need to gather as much information as possible from the clients you're working with so you know exactly what they're going to be looking for uh, before you start your website development. Okay, after you gather information from your client, the next few steps we usually do is we just provide a design or a concept to our clients, okay, to show them basically where they're going to be going with it layout-wise, give them a graphic overview of how it's going to look. Okay, only at that time after that will we actually do any of our development stages. So as you can see, we get about two-thirds way in through our project phases before we actually begin the development part of it. In other words, before we actually look for a theme to use. So the whole bunch of other things you need to have, be aware of before you start that phase. So grab as much information as you can, figure out what the purpose of the theme is, what the goals of it are, okay, etc. Once you're in the development stage, you will actually start developing the website itself, okay? After that, we'll do our testing, which is always a normal phase after we've actually put in our website and got it ready to go, okay? And then the last final portion of it is delivering it online or delivering it to the client and then supplying, uh, supplying any support to that client, okay, so that they can actually go through and troubleshoot any issues that they have along the way. Okay, so that's the first thing to be, keep aware of as you're going through things so that you understand um, that you've got all the parts ready to go instead of just diving in and then grabbing parts along the way because it gets into a big mess doing it that way. So organization is very important. Okay, so like I was mentioning, choosing a theme. Search for the layout that you want first. So look, figure out what type of layout that you want for the client. Are they gonna be using an online store? Okay, well then look for a theme that has that built into it so it's already ready to go. So you're not just adding on to things, okay, and sort of piling it up and making it something that it's not. So try to look for themes that have all that stuff already built into it, okay? If you like your navigation menu being a vertical side as opposed to a top side and you wanna change it later, find a theme that's got that appropriate menu where you want it right away. Figure out the layout that you want before you start just grabbing one and then trying to customize it too much, otherwise you're wasting a lot of your time. That's costing you money in the end, okay? Um, a couple other things we need to go through that at this point that you guys have already done. So you guys have start, started to now uh, customize your themes a little bit. So what Mike was mentioning before is that um, what I basically do, just a quick little run through, um, is just a uh, sample to kind of show you guys here. Uh, but what we can do is sort of show you how we go about adjusting or modifying uh, components of your website uh, theme or your WordPress theme that you're working on. So the one thing that I do inside of Google Chrome, and I always use just Google Chrome, okay? If you want to, you can use Firefox. It has some development t tools as well. Stay away from Internet Explorer, Safari, all that other stuff, okay? Because it doesn't have all these built-in tools already set to go. Okay, so the one thing I do is if I'm trying to figure out a part of my theme that I want to edit, okay, let's take this top menu for an example, okay? Mike mentioned a lot of you guys are working on customizing your menus. Okay, so if I want to look at that menu and customize it, what I'll do inside of Chrome is I'll just right click on it and then choose at the very, very bottom where it says inspect element, okay? At the very, very bottom last option. If you click on inspect element, that will pop up our developer tool, in other words, show us the source code for this particular component that I'm on. Now, if I move my mouse around this code right here, it's gonna highlight different parts of the page. Let me know that this part or this division tag is controlling this area, okay? So as you can see right here with the header class, okay? This header class is controlling this entire header top area of the website. That's why it's being highlighted with my mouse over top of that particular div tag, okay? If I continue down, it'd be the next portion, all the way down into all the parts that I wanna be able to edit and modify on my website. Once I found the part that I want to actually work on, so for example, if I was down here and I wanted to get up to the navigation menu, if I click on this nav ID equals top mega menu dash nav, okay? Now I know because it's highlighting it that this is the menu that controls this area. So this code right here controls all this. Now you can always open up this to see the full amount of code if you want to see sort of more by clicking on the little black arrows here, okay? And it'll open up all the different parts that are embedded inside of that nav tag. 
Okay, now on the right hand side is where I see all my CSS. Okay, so here's all my HTML code. Okay, the right hand side is where all my CSS is. So if I click on this top navigation menu, which you can see right here being selected, I can look to the right and see that the top mega menu dash nav is the actual class in the CSS file that's controlling this menu right here. Okay? I can also see the background color right now is set to be D71921, which is just a hexadecimal code for a color. Okay, but we can adjust this color in the background here to be basically any color that we want to. Okay, we can adjust the backgrounds of it. We can adjust the, the, the colors, the front colors of it. Okay, we can adjust it to be any color we want to, the black color. Okay, and if you want to get into further portions of it, okay, you can keep going into the code and looking at all the parts that contain out the menus that we're working with. Okay, so there's lots of different places to be looking in inside of your navigation areas or your menus that you're essentially working with, okay, along the way. So these are all parts that all control. And if you see the right hand side over here, okay, we've got widths and we've got CSS values that basically control everything on our website. And like I said, so move your mouse around a little bit, okay, and that will help determine the values that you can adjust on here, and you'll see them actually being adjusted inside of here. So if I want to make my area a little bit smaller to use, I can just keep adjusting it and it will actually give me a preview over here of what that looks like. So if I want the navigation menu smaller, okay, you'll see that it originally started off with 1170 pixels wide, but I can adjust that width value of this container, okay, which will actually adjust this year and give me a live preview of what that looks like. Now the benefits of this is that I don't actually have to go into the CSS code and make any committed changes, or what's known as being a commit, okay? We don't have to actually do any committed changes because this area here, our developer tools through this inspect element, will allow us to make adjustments here and then so we can actually preview them without making any solid changes. So once again, I'm just going to show you here. If I click on a 970 width, you'll see that now the menu has shrunken down to a 970 width as opposed to 1170, okay, and, and made it a lot smaller. Okay, that's obviously not what we want because you'll see now it goes on two lines, but this is just showing you how we adjust items. <coughs> Now, if I hit refresh on my screen here, okay, if I refresh the page, it'll come back up to how it was before because I haven't made any adjustment actual changes on it. I'm just kind of playing around with previews about how I adjust certain parts of the page that I'm working on. Okay, and that can, can uh, basically entail everything that's inside of the entire website layout. Okay, it's not just the navigation menus. If you move your mouse down throughout uh, this whole uh, code down here, you'll see all the parts that you can be controlling, okay, and containing and changing along the way. So these are all parts that you want to be able to go through as you're adjusting things, as you're working with them. Yes? Mark, can you draw a connection for them to then, um, when you're, like, you, say you want to change that breadcrumb div, okay? Yes, yes. Breadcrumb all. Right. Show them how they would go and then see which file it's in. Oh, yes, and okay, yes. Go to that file. So if you actually decided you liked one of the changes you made, yeah. Um, that's that's the key to understanding how this thing works. And Firebug is the same exact way. So if you like Firebug better, you can use either or. They're both almost identical. Yes. That's, yeah. Okay. So what Mike's mentioning is that on the right hand side here, as we're changing values, okay, like we're changing values, margins, positions, background colors, a lot of stuff. Uh, in order to figure out where that file is located, if we want to commit those changes, in other words, put those changes in place and keep them, if we hover our mouse over to the right hand side over here, where it just basically tells us what file this is coming from. So this is coming from a, a CSS file that's called red.css. But if you move your mouse over top of it or hover over top of it, it'll give you the exact location as to where this file is located. Okay, so mine's running off my local host just like your, your, your guys have and, and uh, Zamp as well in a client's folder called, called this, WP content, themes, the theme I'm using, assets, CSS folder, and then red.css. That's the actual location of that file if I wanted to edit it. Is that what you're looking okay. for? Yeah, now I want to ask you for something. And I want to see. So can you get into your dashboard and can you can you uh, can you pull a theme in called Mo Moesia? M-O-E-S-I-A. Moesia. It's it's free. Okay, hold on. Um, uh, yeah, take your time. Because it like it, it's is that a free thing? When you show us this, Martin, it seems that easy. And then I go to do it. Well, it's it's never that easy, first yeah. of all. <laughs> it's supposed to be not easy. easy. <laughs> yeah, well it may it may look easy at certain times just because you may have gone through it a few times, but this whole process is always a bit of a 
trial and error kind of thing. Even if you've done it 10 times for 10 years, like myself, okay, you're still kind of going through things, your hiccups along the way, it's all part of the development process. So don't be uh, put back by it by any yeah. means. Okay, so we, let's go. And keep in mind, if you can't make this work, we're not going to think any less of you. <laughs> no worries. M O E yep. S I A. Not to just try it to a different site. See, yeah, like this one has been, uh, it's been bothering me. Yeah, that That's one. it, okay. Shall we install it? Yes. It's a live client site, Mike. I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it live right now? No. no. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Here's what we want to change. And I think there might be three people in this section using this theme, but only two of them have uh, demonstrated to me they want this fix. So, so go to the, uh, just go and pull it up. Just go and view the page, view the site. All right, now you're in Chrome, right? Yeah. Okay, so I want this responsive. So this is responding to the full-size monitor. As soon as we shrink it down, it changes it. But on a full-size monitor, I want that to be like that but they really like the way the icons are set up right below it. Okay. So instead of having to scroll down, they want to shrink the size of that banner. Oh, so that these are like, these are showing up? Yeah, yeah, they show up when you push when you push down, right? It's, yeah. That's the way the site is designed. Right, but you want it to kind of be like this. Yeah. Where they're yeah, kind of still at the bottom a little bit. Even a little farther up. So I'm able to do it okay. and inspect element, but yep. I cannot find for the life of me where the hell this code is. For, yeah, so for what? It's, I think it's masthead. That's don't don't mean like if you've got it to work, then what are you trying to do? I can't, I've got it to preview work, oh. but I can't find the code in the files. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And this is, a, this is what another student ran into, is they loved the inspect element thing, Yeah. but then a few of the things they wanted to change, they couldn't find in the files. Right, okay. So I was, it took me about two or three minutes. I was able to get it to finally change when I got on that, masthead. Yeah, okay. When I changed that height, Yep, you just added a height value in here? Yeah. No, you did? Yeah. Okay, like what, 600 pixels? Or even shorter. So that didn't work. When I changed it in there, it worked. Like in the left side, Yeah. it actually worked. Like I couldn't figure out what was going on here. Okay. And, and this may be one of those situations where we just say, you know what, forget to get a new theme. Right. Um, there's a 643 at the top I was able to change, I think. Hmm. See, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. They so see that. change it to like 400, do something extreme. Okay, there. So okay, there we go. Great. How the hell do you find you that? Keep that open. I want to try it on mine now. That's yeah, okay, so it's this one right here. Yeah, so I, I was able to do this on Terrence and Pally. Okay, so you just I can't find the file. You can't find the file that yes, I trust. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take a look at finding this particular uh, number that we were looking at before. <laughs> it was 643? Mine was 651, so I changed it to 451. There's a 651? Oh, Hold on, I'm just going to refresh the page. Uh, oh, weird. Well, that, see, I think it might be relative to your monitor size, actually. I think it might be responding to your monitor size. Could be. But it's almost always 643. I, Okay, well, for this, we need to kind of go into Dreamweaver here. Um, do you guys use Dreamweaver for your development? They have development? brackets and no patterns. Brackets, okay, that's good. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. Okay, so we're just going to go into uh, wherever your files are stored. So it would be WP content. Oh, yeah, I forgot we using the ZAMP. Okay. No, no, I'm not telling you. I'm just making sure that we're not wrong on this. Yeah. Uh, What's this theme called again? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here's where it just, uh, yeah. So here's where all the files are for this theme, okay? They're always located inside of your WP-content WP themes folder. As most of you probably know if you've been in there already, okay? And then we take a look through uh, the HTML files and CSS files and make adjustment changes uh, to our layout. So that's one thing that we're going to take a look at doing. Um, let me just go back here for a quick second. I just want to see how they have it laid out. Okay. Kill this too. 
Um, okay, so you just want to adjust to 643. Okay, so the first thing that I, I usually would do, if it's already adjusting and giving me a value of like, like 643 or anything like that, okay, yeah. what we can do is that if it's not giving you a responsive value, then we, we can actually just pull up a file. Okay, it doesn't matter which one we pull up. Uh, we'll do a control F or just do a search, okay, for that 643 pixels and see if we can actually find it in the in the actual theme itself. So that's the first step of what I would do. Because if it is located in there, then we would find it. And as you can see, it's not. Yeah. Okay, this doesn't count. This is just going through and going through. So you're using Dreamweaver to search through the content of all those files at once. Exactly. Okay, yeah, I'm looking through that's every that's single file all at once. I had tried the four or five that I thought it would have to be in and it wasn't. Yeah, so really okay. Glad that I wasn't totally losing my mind. Nope, you were not. <laughs> Because what I'm hoping you can do is, and this is where I'm still, like I've made three WordPress sites, I've been using it for a couple of years, not 10. Yep. But this is where I'm still a little rusty because I don't understand why it's not there. Okay. And my only guess would be that it's responsive to the point where it's making it that way each time. Right. Okay, so it looks like we've got a width of here, so let's just add in a value of uh, height uh, 547. But how come that's not mass 10? I just wanted to see if this even will do it. Okay, yeah, so it's not even actually adjusting it. Okay, so it must be different locations for it. I have to keep looking around and try to find it. Yeah, sorry. This, yeah, yeah see, there's a couple of overlays. I gotta keep looking through and try to find them, right? So here's probably what might be right here. But again, I'll have to put in a height value to see if it changes at all. Well, it's showing an image, right? So we can search for that image. I didn't think of that. Yeah, looking at looking at looking at CSS code, it basically shows everything that we need to find. But this pattern, yeah, you can always find this pattern as well. Yeah, that's not the picture that's there though. That picture has a name. Because Taryn sent it to me. I think it was just called header. Just called header. Yeah, yeah it's header. Like okay. Well, we can again. Uh, it's, in, uh, it's in the content. It's in the content folder somewhere. WP content. Yeah, we'll we'll look, we'll look here. So this process I'm doing right now is basically what you should always be kind of doing when you're going through and trying to make changes like this, okay? So go through to your themes folder, uh, yeah, yeah. images, pattern. That's it. Pattern. Oh, it's got this pattern here. Yeah. Okay. So you can look for the, even this header image if you wanted to. Okay, I'm just going to undo my changes here that I made for these both these files because I don't want to keep those changes, guys, okay? So that's one thing to remember, okay? So if you're making changes in the back here, if you don't want to keep those changes, you've got to make sure that you undo your changes, okay? And don't do too many at a time. Don't do like 10 changes and then go, oh yeah, I want to go back to the one that I did the second time because now you're 10 changes and you won't remember where you were. So just do one or two changes at a time before you move on to the next part. Otherwise, you're going to be lost as to what you've done. And I've done that a lot where you're all of a sudden your theme is now broken because you've gone through 15 changes and you forgot to go back and change like your third change or you forgot where that was, right? Those are all important yeah. things to remember all the way. Okay, so we can look for this, uh, what was it called again? This uh, picture? Header. Oh, header. Header down there, you can even search .jpg. Because, <coughs> I mean, it's real easy to switch that. Tara just made a new picture. A new, she just set in a new graphic that was the same exact size. Yeah, right. And, and changed it. Like, see now at this point, guys, this is where you would start to wonder, because Martin's really fast at this stuff, right? This is where you'd start to wonder, and Taryn was already there, like, all right, screw this, I'm getting another thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, but I understand the value of the way it's set up, if they could get it. Yeah, adjusted, yeah. See, I think it looks like this is where the height and values are, flex height, true. Yeah, so we have to actually really right. understand what's going on. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to do. Yeah, okay. yeah. So all this stuff is really like, you know, this is really getting deep into the code because at this point now we're looking at uh, PHP code. So it can get a little bit kind of tedious along the way, but we can try it. But it's all just by searching for one word, right? Yeah, I'm just searching for, yeah, basically one word along the way. As you can see, there's still not adjusting. It's got to have like a height of 100% somewhere, I'm thinking. Otherwise, it should take those values. Because usually, if it's going full screen like that, it's going to be using a height of 100% at some place. Skill bar, slide left. Yeah, because the responsive theme is mainly based on percentages, right? Yeah, right. Instead of actual sizes. 
which I taught him in the web work workshop, don't do that in an HTML site but with WordPress. There we go. Okay, so I'm just adjusting the size of this thing. I finally found it. Um, but we need to, these, other, these other parts of it below, we still need to adjust. Because there's still more of it than there. But here's where it is. So it's in this custom header file. Okay, okay so it's using an app media screen only. So what basically what this means is, is if your screen okay, has a minimum width of 1025 pixels, then use this code. Okay, so that's what it's doing. So it's getting a little bit now detailed. It's, it's, it's got res uh, responsive uh, sort of CSS styles going on. If your screen's a certain size, then do this, then show this. If your screen gets this size, then show this, then do this. So that's what this command right here, app media screen only means. Okay, so now that we found kind of the base location for it, okay, now we can adjust it here and make um, any adjustments that we need to kind of do with it. I just want to see if I can further adjust this along the way. So it's in the, it's in the custom header, Mike. Uh, yeah. Custom dash header. Yeah. Okay, that's the one that you want to take a look at. Okay. Okay, and then from there you can make uh, some of your adjustments. Well, we still have this spot right here, and I'm going to inspect my element on it so I'm to see where all that's sort of coming from. You see that overlay is still set to 643. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. But, you, but it's not listed as six because I think if the monitor is of a certain size, it automatically divides right. to 643. Yeah, that's exactly which is what a it's doing. Of yeah, okay, so what's this one here? Welcome info. Uh, let me just kill this for a second. Yeah, I don't see it doing anything. Okay, so what I'm doing here, you can also uh, check mark these and deselect them if you want to just remove the code on it. Okay, just to remove those values, see if it adjusts or change anything. That's what I'm doing with that portion of it as well. I was able to get the whole thing to shrink with that masthead code, but yeah. I still couldn't figure out where to adjust it. See where it says end? See where the end mat, the masthead ends? Yep. The header ends and then the masthead ends. Okay, so, so the header did. Yeah. And the okay. masthead made it smaller. Yeah, and so yeah, this is probably just using my, my monitor to, to give me the height value. That's why they're changing. Yeah. If people have different sizes here. Because there's no style sheet, as you can see the right hand side right here, see how these have all have style sheets associated with them? Okay, this one does not. So it, it means that this value here is not coming from a style sheet, not coming from any file in particular. It's responding to the monitor. It's just picking up the size of my monitor. So with and your then, experience, because you could probably take another 10 minutes and fix this, Yeah. what would you do now? I mean, But to get this to get a, be pulled up? Yeah, just to give up. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, no I just probably spend about you know 15, 20 minutes on it. Figure out what I'm doing now. Like just kind of isolating parts of it. I know how to, how to adjust. I've already got this to adjust a little bit higher. Now I just need to worry about adjusting this space below, figuring out why it's going to 100% value, and then just trying to go through and just make a slight adjustments to see if anything starts to move up along the page. So I basically I'm going through the code like line by line to see if I can make any adjustments along the way to kind of make changes to it. As you can see with this background right here, so let's control this background right here. Um, but again. That height value is something we we'll want to change in the back end over here. You can also maybe even specify uh, like 400 px. Like yeah, like an actual value instead of a uh, percentage amount. You know, wait. Now go back to the picture height and make it the full size again, but leave that thing 500 px. That like you remember up at the picture, they changed the, the height of it. Um, the actual picture properties. It was in the same file. Um, where header was there. Oh yeah. See where it says 550? Yeah. Make that the full size again. Yeah, I'm just gonna go back and make sure. Okay, so yeah, don't forget to go back and undo your changes. Um okay, what did you want to do, Mike? Sorry? Um so set that to four hundred PX or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the picture. Okay, and then we'll just refresh. Okay. Okay, so it's adjusting now. Now this is at 550. So it's still squishing the, but the menu's up now. Why is it squishing the picture? Um, it's not really squishing. It's just cutting it off, right? Because we're setting a specific height for it. Go to the picture and set it at 100 percent. Where it says 650. Yeah, I'm just gonna read this. What, what it's saying here. Uh, And I don't want you guys to get nothing out of this. Like this is, if anything at all, this should demonstrate to you the power of WordPress and why you don't want to be doing this stuff. Like, 
Yeah, I don't think that's not even affecting it. I think it's because it's already it's using the values um, already down in here. Yeah, but it still leaves that white space there, which is odd. Yeah, because if I put it in 100 percent, it's going to go back into the full. Well, it's a little bit better. Wait, what the hell? How'd you get? Wait a minute. That's it. How'd you do that? What did we? Uh, I just adjusted the values to be 100 percent along the way. Uh, and I also did some other adjustments of there had styles. To be something else, like, shit. Uh, let me see where it was. See if I can inspect all it for you again, see if there's any changes in the That's, that's what they've been trying to do, right? Yeah. That thing is still at 643, but you've managed to bring the menu up. Yeah. And I don't know how you did that. <laughs> I don't even know either. I did it so quickly. <laughs> um, I had taken these values out. These were, uh, did we have 100% uh, down here at the beginning? Do you remember? It might have been 80. I no, know. I think 80 is what I put it at. See what we have here. 650. Maybe I change this value here. I forget. You know what? I'm just going to make you give me that file and then I'll just compare it to the other one. Uh, hold on. Because I did do uh, a couple other adjustments. That, that's what you're looking for, though, eh? What's that? That's what you're looking for, eh? Yeah. I don't know if it was in that file. It might have adjusted something else. Yeah. It may have been somewhere else. Well, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, let's just change this height again. Okay, yeah, yeah so, so this is adjusting the size. Some other change that brought the menu up. Yeah, so that all we, you always want to leave is at 100, so the picture will go 100% of the area that you want. Oh, I think it was the overlay file. Remember the overlay I adjusted in here? Yeah. That's probably where it was. Oh, it was, it was called overlay because I just did an expect element on it, and that's where I found it. So these ones here? Yeah. What time percent? Let me see if I can go back. See if I did any other changes to it. So if I save this file and refresh. Okay, yeah, so I'm still keeping it, which is good. Get the container. Still set properly, top bar. Still looks good. This is this mass head you were talking about, right? Okay, image class. Height is auto, so that's good. I know you did something to pull that menu up farther. Yeah, like this spot right here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll <laughs> Could just re-download that theme and then go through it again. But hold on, I just want to see if I did adjust anything. Well, I don't want you to have to do that. I can. Hold on. Oh, maybe that's what I did. No. That's awesome, it can't even be undone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have been in this file. Hmm. Hold on a second. But this is why, guys, when you pay for a theme and you do not have to do that in my class, under any circumstances, you are not required to do that, it will not affect your mark. Nor will this kind of stuff. It's just this is what I've been spending most of my time on helping you guys with. You know, I'd rather you spend more time adding the content and tweaking the SEO for every page and post in your site, right? That's what's more important. Just get a general layout that you're okay with and then work on the content.
but I end up spending most of my time on this stuff and I can't get it fixed. And I'm, I do not mean to put Mark on the spot here and like to excuse my not being able to do it. I, it's just really convoluted the way it's set up. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, close these down so we can kind of get in here a little bit and take a look. Okay, so I'm just, I just deleted that theme. Yeah, no problem. Right out, and then we can take a look again. What was it called again? Try it one more time. M O M O E S I A. Oh yeah. So most of the stuff should be that easy, like background colors, changing the general size of a fixed div or a fixed area. It, but when you have a responsive theme, it does get a little trickier, and you should. I mean, everything should be responsive, really. You have to understand too that you weren't the developers of this of this theme, right? You didn't. If you coded this all by yourself, all from scratch, and you would know every part of why it's working. So that's why you don't get thrown back by, oh, I don't know why I don't understand this because I'll get into parts I don't understand either because I wasn't the developer of the theme. I got to kind of get into their head. Well, why they put a div class over here? How does this work? Why would they 100% this? Right? I got to understand how they developed it. I got to go through the code a little bit. I got to kind of take an idea of why they developed it, why things are going here. I got to have to learn basically a little bit of their code first before I can understand how to fix it or adjust it. So that's why I, I go through that as much as possible first. Maggie, so let's question. go. What can like you I'm do just, at that point? Yeah, like I've got a menu here, and like through looking, I was able to like change some of the colors. But when you go and when when you mouse over the color that's coming up, I hate it. Oh, <laughs> and I want to change hover. it. Oh, like I, don't, I, I have no idea. That's the hover. I yeah. Use that word. yeah, that's hover. It's just the other part of the link color. There's all these different link yeah, I, formats. Yeah, exactly. That's just the just, just the rollover value of it. But yeah, you have to go through and like, but you see, oh, I can right click on this background here towards black right here, and it's doing right click on inspect element, okay? And I can see that the background here, which is showing up right here, which is 222 color, okay? This is a dark uh, kind of black color. So I can do my adjustments here. It's a width of it as well, with this, this part in black down here, okay? It's got a, again, a color of black, I can adjust those colors if I want to to see how they look. Before I go into the style.css file, which is right here, where we're saying that this, dash, or sorry, dot top dash bar is located, I can make those adjustments there. So I can grab this name of this particular a class element called top bar, okay, and then I can look through it. Again, you can do this inside of brackets as well, it doesn't have to be uh, just in Dreamweaver. Oh, yeah, you should be able to do all that in brackets as well. Okay, brackets is free, guys. I brought it up in week five, it's free. Okay, but I just want to show you really quickly, um, when I get my docs here. Content, themes. Okay, so here's this here's this top bar right here. Now, as you can see in the code for my inspect element that I had up, okay, right over here where I have my background color being 222, okay, which the position and width and all that. So here's where it is in my CSS file. Again, in the style.css file, as mentioning right here. Okay, so I open up the style.css, which is right here. I do a search for this dot top dash bar, okay, that's what we're seeing right here. Okay, and that gets me right into the code for that exact section. This duplicates exactly what you're seeing in this part right here. And so now I can adjust this code right here and make modifications to that part of the theme right away. Okay, so that's all part of what working with it. But as you can see, we've got 1,300 lines of CSS code in this one file. So it's a lot of kind of digging around. But it does take time. That's all part of the process. It's not something you just quickly change and quickly update right away. It takes a little time kind of digging through, finding the areas that actually do the adjustments that you're looking for with a theme that you're trying to work with. Uh, so again, these are all parts of the, of the process. I'm just going to do a quick change here. You should see this in the background now. Okay, so if I do a change, on this, make this a lighter gray. It will again it'll adjust the menu down here. And then again, just keep following your mouse along the way as you're going down. We can adjust anything we want to. Okay, even this area down here, we can also adjust. And here's a width of it right here. So I can adjust the size of this width, okay, and span it out to be longer or to be shorter. Okay, so now it's only got 350 pixels. And you can see I can now make this content area now 350 pixels 
by changing the dot content dash area in my style sheet, we need 350 instead of 750. Okay, and that's where all of your adjustments can come from. Okay, if I move back to 750, okay, and then I go back to the uh, 750 pixels in width. The reason why it's not going full width in this theme is probably because they've got some sidebars that you're going to be using inside the scene. I'm assuming that you guys are using the sidebars for that area or whatever. That will be the remainder of what this section over here is. So yeah, it's a lot of kind of just digging around inside your files and doing that inspect element on anywhere, on the, any website that you're using, okay, to make any adjustments on. So again, I'm with this new theme, kind of adding to this back area here. Okay, I'm gonna move down. And then again, I can adjust these values. So here's these sidebars I was just talking about that are now appearing over here, okay? And so if I go up the screen again, go back into the area I was looking at, to show us a little bit more of what's going on with it. Yeah, this stuff we're able to find. Yeah, you're, you're okay with this stuff? Yeah, this is good. This yeah. Is great. Um, it's just more of that, that top part. Yeah, that yeah. drove me nuts. Yeah. And, and again, it's just a little bit of digging around in order to find out which parts do what. You, and it's a lot of kind of using your preview areas in order to figure out what menu is controlling what inside the file. So I've got back to scratch again, Mike, where it's uh, full width once again. Yeah, sure. It's overlay, right? I believe so. Let's take a look. <coughs> so this should be good for you guys to see every time you go into the these are WP content, you go to themes, you go to the themes folder, and then within that folder, it might be in CSS, it could be somewhere, but when you hover over the file path in the inspector, it should tell you where it's located. Now, if you have a situation like this where it's responsive and it's creating the sizing based on uh, how big the monitor is, you're not going to find the actual elements. Yeah, that was a custom header. Yeah, so again, it's not like people can just kind of just jump into any theme, even like myself. i got to first understand what's going on with this code. I can't just go, look, I go, oh yeah, okay, it's doing that. No, i got to read through it kind of like a little bit of glimpsing line by line, kind of seeing what's going on with it. So it can get a little bit difficult along the way, but it's all about just experimenting and trying out with it as best you can. And then from there, we can kind of make adjustments as we need to. So let's try, I think we, we adjusted it down here, didn't we? Let's just try this um, again. That went back to 100% though, and it was still, uh, still, what do you call it? That, that, that just did that, so it was something else. That brought the menu up. Yeah. It might have been in 404. It might have been like the overlay thing. I wasn't sure. Could be, yeah. But again, we get, I make sure I read all of what's going on the right hand side over here first uh, before I get into anything. So it might be this top 100%. Let me just try. Dot welcome info. So it's usually always a style sheet, the style.css. Uh, the one that you're gonna f always first start to look look at first. Uh, it'll be the main one. So all I'm doing here is I'm just adjusting some of these values uh, just to see if I can sort of change them up a little bit as I go along the way. Okay, to see if that it's gonna make any changes to the, the back end. So we've almost got it. We just gotta get this part out of the way. Okay, that is great part down here that's causing you to make make the menu. Yeah, that was, picture, just, that, was that, uh, that was that that was the header file. We gotta put that back to 100. So what did you just do? You just brought it up from the welcome info. That's what did it, welcome info. Well, no, I was just looking at if it was going to do anything there. But it, no, I don't, it didn't really do anything, no. No, it brought the, brought the menu up. Maybe not, oh no, maybe it's because you scrolled down on it. Yeah, let me just refresh it. Yeah. I'm adding back the, the code, so. Yeah. Oh, look, the menu's there now. That's uh, just because I was, oh, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so hold on. So, so, it could, so it could be this overlay part here, but again, we have to look at what it's doing. So the header has to be back to 100% then. Yeah, let me just see, hold on. So okay, so if, I, if you're adjusting values like this and not doing anything, then don't worry about, that will obviously won't be the one you need to work with. Bit of a tricky one, eh? Yeah. We wanna it's okay, just forget. We'll, we'll keep going. This is I think still going through this has been a really good 
it's 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 on this overlay. Um, it's somewhere. We just need to find it. Yeah, I just want to see if I add values to it, if it's going to adjust or not. Yeah, it's just this white space we got to get rid of, eh? Oh, no, no, that, that's from the header. No, no, no. No, that's from that header file. Oh, you think it's at, that's at yeah, 650? Yeah, put that back at 100%, 80% there. Yep. Put that back to 100. Scroll down. Yeah, but that'll just make the image come all the way down to the bottom. But there's another part. That background white part oh, yeah, that has the pattern. What we had last time, we got rid of the white space and, and we brought the whole thing up. Let's see if I can adjust this to 550. Again, now we're using like multiple different files, right? So yeah. it gets a little bit trickier. Uh, what was the other thing I did? I took out some of these uh, these parts right here. So that might have been it as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Because what they're telling it to do is it's saying basically to fill your entire screen, right? It's saying fill my oh, fill yeah, my screen. See so now it's you know, it's smaller now. The picture, uh, yeah, but the picture. Well, that's because you changed the percent again, though. The picture got bigger. Yeah. So I'm taking out these two values right here that were background attachment fix, background size cover, which means cover your entire screen. Yeah. Right. So I'm just taking that out, and saying don't apply those values to it. Take that out. Okay, the background tap is not going to be fixed. It's not going to have a cover for the background. In other words, it's not going to spread out to your entire screen. Okay. So I just want to remove those out of there. Okay, so if you take those out, it should, probably will do nothing. But if you go to the overlay then and make it shorter. Yeah, it could, yeah. I just want to see if I can adjust these two. Oh. Okay, so it's, uh, it's like... Zoomed in more in the picture, but yeah. And again, that's just because I was changing these values here. Yeah, and then I'll add the white space again. Yeah. So there's obviously another component that's pulling up this side before this can begin. What's the name of that file with that overlay graphic? Style.css? Yeah. It's got to be in there. Well, we'll oh. work on it after our it's most certainly in here. We just need to sort of actually find it, put the exact amount on it. In order to get to adjust. But you have to remember too, there's a couple of overlays, right? There's gonna be yeah. a few of them. Yeah, that one. Oh yeah, this is actually, because this has the pattern on it. <laughs> yeah, again, I'm just looking around because, again, this is kind of a normal process because if you don't know, you don't, no one knows the theme, right? This is developed by someone else, so you have to kind of figure out what they were doing with it and how they had set it up because they may have just done it in a whole different, complete way that you wouldn't have even done it yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. So all this stuff needs to be kind of... Yeah, let's let that one go. That was, that was a really good lesson, that one, uh, <laughs> in being defeated by... <laughs> yeah. Like, well, just, it's just a matter of time to, in order to find out which part. Well, no, I know. If you weren't in front of the room, it would probably be a little easier, too. I just really put you on the spot here. Yeah, I'm just trying to find the Wait. Oh, okay. You just weren't scrolled up. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There's this one element right here that's really controlling. It looks like it's the overlay, but it's weird. But if I take these out. Yeah, there's something else. That's controlling it. Minimum widths. Display none. Has banner with 100%. All style.
The other good thing too is if you pull up the main index page, so you give this idea of how it's actually laid out as well. So primary class, F class. Sometimes as well, uh, there will be certain files that controls, like the front page. See here, page, front page, page full width. So here's the front page. So all these, all these parts right here, like, are all kind of working together. Yeah. So you have to kind of take a look at all of these yeah, files. Yeah. are outlined in other CSS files, not PHP files. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, content width scale one. Uh, media banner header. Hey, mass type. That's the mass type. You see that? Yeah, I couldn't find that in any of the files. Header description, get theme. Here's the header image right here. It's all right. Let's just show them WooCommerce really quick and then, then you'll be good. I, I do have one question that a student had that I was hoping you could look at too before you left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just all about finding that element. It's gonna take a little bit more time to go through <laughs> and find it, but yeah. you know, I mean, I can, uh, I can definitely do that. It's no problem. So it's just gonna take some time to go through and figure out where they've hidden you're, the. You're already doing me a huge favor by being here, I, and that really that's taught me a bunch. Just you going through that. So. Yeah, you th that's all it is. You just have to play around with it and yeah. then find that spot. They've obviously did it in a completely different way that I would have done it. I just would have had it set that one overlay 100% or uh, that value of where it's going to be resized for. <laughs> but it looks like they've, see they've got overlay and then they've got another overlay. Yeah. So this isn't well, always. As soon as you change the monitor, it totally changes the yeah, size. It doesn't yeah. just change the size of stuff. Yeah, that's right, it yeah. completely changes. Now do you think that's. But they've got two overlays. See here, see here it's overlay here. Yeah. Okay, so this is a dot overlay. They're defining the information for the overlay and then they're going dot overlay again. This is like not good coding. You should always put it all yeah. under one. All of this should be under yeah, here. Yeah, it's, the same it's the exact same thing. So, you know, that's yeah. why it's confusing for me because I don't know why they had, they're splitting it up and doing it all like it that. It still respond the same way with the class. Yeah. Yeah, it'll still work, you know, the way that you want it to. You just have to go through and change the code on it. So that's all the stuff that you want to be able to go through and take a look at. Yeah. But yeah, again, you have to kind of look at look for the code. It's, it's going to take a little bit in order to figure out where it goes.